Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Today, inshallah, we're going to solve February March 2021 Cambridge exam paper 4 variant 2. Starting with the first question. The table shows number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in particle A to I. Answer the following questions about particles A to I. Each letter may be used once, more than once, or not used at all. State which particle is an anion. Anion is a negatively charged ion in which number of electrons are higher than number of protons. So here you can find particle E, 16 electron 16 protons and 18 electron so it's a negative ion it's an ion which particles are cation cations are positively charged ions so number of protons are higher than number of electrons here you can find particle a one proton and zero electron particle i 20 protons and 18 electrons so it's positive ion don't confuse between anion and cation, which is positive and which is negative. Remember that cations are positive ion by remember this drawing for a cat that has two positive eyes. Third one, which particle are noble gas atoms? Noble gas has complete outer shell filled with eight electron. So you have to return back to table. Electronic distribution here for element D and element G. It has eight electron in its outer shell, so D and G are noble gases. Which one is a halogen atom? Halogen are group seven elements. It has seven electron in its outer shell. Here you have to know that number of the group represent the number of outer shell electrons. So here element F has seven electron in its outer shell, its halogen atom. Which one is group one atom? Group 1 has one electron in its outer shell. Here we have H. H is group 1 atom, which is alkaline metals. Which one has the same nuclear number? Nuclear number is the sum of protons and neutrons. So here we have G and I, 18 protons plus 22 neutrons, it's 40. And here element I, 20 plus 20 is 40, so G and I have the same nuclear number. <clears throat> Which one causes acidity in aqueous solution? Of course, it's particle A, protons. Which one is used to define the relative atomic mass of element? Of course, we know that from the definition of the relative atomic mass that we are using carbon-12. Here, it's particle B, 6 protons and 6 neutrons. It's carbon-12. Explain why B and C are isotopes of the same element because they have the same number of protons but different number of neutrons. Question 2. The elements shown here are gases at room temperature and pressure, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and chlorine. State which one of these gases is green. Of course, it's chlorine gas. The gases shown here exist as diatomic molecules. State another element which is diatomic and it's a gas at room temperature and pressure. Of course, it's a fluorine gas here because uh, other elements of group 7 are not gases. They exist as diatomic molecules, but are, they are not gases at room temperature and pressure. When separate sample of each of these gases placed in container, they will diffuse. Describe why gases diffuse. Gases diffuse because Gas particles are in continuous random motion. State which one of these four gases has the highest rate of diffusion. You have to know that the rate of diffusion is inversely proportional to the molar mass. The gas that has the lowest molar mass has the higher rate of diffusion. And here is hydrogen. Hydrogen has the higher rate of diffusion because it has the lowest molecular mass. Nitrogen, oxygen, and other substances found in the clean, dry air. State the percentage of nitrogen in clean, dry air. It's 78%. Other than nitrogen and oxygen, identify another element found in the clean, dry air. He asked here about element. So it's argon. Identify a compound in the clean, dry air. It's carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, remember that carbon dioxide is compound, not element. 
Nitrogen and oxygen can be separated from liquid dry air. State the name of this process. It's fractional distillation. I said that this is a very popular question. How can you separate nitrogen from liquid air? By fractional distillation. Third question here is about ammonia. Nitrogen reacts with hydrogen to form ammonia in an industrial process. Name this industrial process, it's hopper process. State the meaning of this symbol. This symbol means that it's a reversible reaction. State the condition of this industrial process and you have to mention here the unit, include units. Temperature 450 Celsius and the pressure 200 atmospheric. You have to memorize the condition for hopper process. Identify or name the catalyst used in this industrial process. It's finally divided iron. If we increase the pressure, the yield of the ammonia increase. Explain why in terms of equilibrium. Here, you have to mention what happened to the equilibrium when we increase pressure. So increasing the pressure shifted the equilibrium to the right side or to the formation of more ammonia to the forward direction because increasing the pressure favor the side of lower number of moles or lower number of molecules. Here you can find that the side of ammonia we have two molecules and in the side of the reactant we have four molecules. One plus three is four. So increasing the pressure will favor the side of lower number of mole or lower number of molecules. It's the same. You can write moles or molecules it will be shifted toward the right side or toward the formation of more ammonia. Second question, if the temperature increase, the rate of the reaction increase. Explain why in terms of particles. Here you have to mention what happened to the particles when we increase temperature. And this question is for three marks. So you have to cover three points. First one, when we increase the temperature, the kinetic energy of the particles increase, so these particles move faster. Second point, when it moves faster, more frequent collision occur per second. And the third point, the particles have sufficient energy equal or more to more than the activation energy needed to react. So here we cover three points with three marks. Question B. Ammonia reacts with sulfuric acid to make a compound which is used as fertilizer. Write a chemical equation for this reaction between ammonia and sulfuric acid. Here, this question is for two marks. One mark for correct balanced equation and the other mark for a correct formula of the product. So here you have to balance uh, the equation and write the formula of the product uh, uh, two ammonium ion with one sulfate group. Question four. A student want to make some zinc chloride, chloride crystals. The student follow the procedure here as shown. Step one. Add excess zinc powder to dilute hydrochloric acid to form aqueous zinc chloride solution. Remove the excess unreacted zinc powder from the aqueous zinc chloride solution. Step three, heat the solution until it is saturated. Step four, allow the saturated solution to cool and remove the crystals that forms. Question A, write the question, write the equation for the reaction in step one, including state symbols. Step one, zinc powder plus dilute hydrochloric acid. So here, this equation for three marks. One mark for correct balanced equation and one mark for the correct formula of the product, zinc chloride, and the third mark will be for state symbols. So here, zinc powder is solid. You have to write S. H, uh, HCl is an aqueous because it's dilute HCl. It's aqueous solution. Zinc chloride in aqueous solution, so it's aqueous. And hydrogen gas produced, we will write it as a gas. Explain why excess zinc powder is added in step one. Here we add excess zinc to the acid to ensure all the acid react. Suggest why we, how can we remove the unreacted zinc powder in step two. In step two, undissolved solid in solution, of 
course it can be removed by filtration unreacted or undissolved zinc powder saturated solution is formed in step 3 suggest what is meant by the term saturated solution saturated solution is solution in which no more solid can dissolve at given temperature and here there is one mark for this word at a given temperature because the solubility change by changing temperature so you have to write that we cannot add more solid at this given temperature explain why crystals form as we cool the solution step 4 when we cool the solution here crystals start to form because solubility decreased by decreasing temperature so crystal of zinc chloride start to form by decreasing temperature now name two zinc compounds which react with dilute hydrochloric acid to form zinc chloride uh, zinc oxide and zinc hydroxide react with dilute hydrochloric acid as bases and zinc carbonate can also react with dilute hydrochloric acid if we add excess calcium metal and instead of excess zinc powder in step one we cannot obtain pure calcium chloride pure calcium chloride crystal don't form explain why because calcium is highly reactive metal it will react with water to produce calcium hydroxide also so we cannot obtain pure calcium chloride crystals question h some salts can be made by titration in titration experiment 20 centimeter cube of aqueous sodium hydroxide react exactly with 25 centimeter cube of 0.1 mole per decimeter cube dilute sulfuric acid to make sodium sulfate equation here as written circle the name and the type of reaction that takes place here the reaction between sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid acid and base it's a neutralization reaction calculate the concentration of the aqueous sodium hydroxide gram per decimeter cube using the following steps here you have to follow the steps for calculation of concentration of sodium hydroxide calculate the number of moles of dilute sulfuric acid used number of moles of sulfuric acid can be calculated by multiplying its concentration by its volume but you have to remember here that the volume has to be written in decimeter cube so here you're given the volume of sulfuric acid as 25 centimeter cube we will divide this by thousand to convert it into decimeter cube multiply by the concentration which is 0.1 mole so you will get the number of moles of dilute sulfuric acid which is 0 0.0025 moles this is number of moles of dilute sulfuric acid determine the number of moles of, so of sodium hydroxide which react with the dilute sulfuric acid remember here that we are using the balance in the equation as a ratio to the number of moles here we have two moles sodium hydroxide react with one mole of sulfuric acid so we are using this ratio to calculate the number of moles if we have one mole of sulfuric acid we will need two moles of sodium hydroxide so we will multiply the number of moles of sulfuric acid by two to get number of moles of uh, sodium hydroxide which is here 0 0.005 moles calculate the concentration of aqueous sodium hydroxide this is uh, here we have to calculate the concentration of sodium hydroxide number of moles divide the volume you will give you will get the concentration number of moles we get it in the previous step it's 0 0.005 divide the volume again here the volume is given in centimeter cube 20 centimeter cube you have to divide it by thousand to, to convert it into decimeter cube and the answer here the concentration of the sodium hydroxide will be 0.25 mole per decimeter cube calculate the concentration of the aqueous sodium hydroxide in gram per decimeter 
here we calculate the concentration in mole per decimeter and we want to convert it into gram per decimeter so calculate the molar mass of sodium hydroxide which is 23 for sodium 16 for oxygen and 1 for hydrogen the molar mass is 40 so one mole one mole of sodium hydroxide contains 40 grams here we have 0.25 mole of the concentration here is 0.25 mole per decimeter so this will contain 10 gram here we can make cross multiplication we will find this this uh, 0.25 moles contain 10 grams of 10 gram per decimeter so so this concentration which is 0.25 mole per decimeter contained 10 gram sodium hydroxide question 5 the table shows the names or structures of organic compounds from B to you some uh, letters have a full structure and some other letters have only the name give letters of the organic compound from B to U that are unsaturated hydrocarbons unsaturated hydrocarbons compound that has double bond or treble bonds these are unsaturated here we have compound R which is butene alkene is unsaturated and U has double bond of course so R and U are unsaturated hydrocarbon. Describe the test for unsaturated hydrocarbon. It's bromine water. And we will have the color of the bromine uh, change it from orange to colorless. Or we can say discoloration of the bromine water change from orange to colorless solution. Butene, but1ene, is unbranched molecule unbranched so no side chain okay name the unbranched isomer of butene but one in here he did unbranched isomer so no side chain we can make isomer by changing the position of the double bond okay so here it's one in we can make it two in by changing the position of the double bond from carbon 1 to carbon 2 and here remember to calculate the number of hydrogen atom around each carbon correctly so each carbon should have only four bonds draw the structure of the branched isomer of but one in show all the atoms and all the bonds here he need another isomer which is a branched isomer so we will not change the position of the side bond we will change we will make the isomer by making a branch here it's a methyl group on the second carbon and you have to correct add the uh, hydrogen around each carbon to have four bonds around each carbon here uh, it will be two methyl but one in or two missile beauty so sorry two missile propene it would be two missile propene question D question D here dodecane is an alkane with 12 carbon atoms it can be cracked write the formula of dodecane it's alkane so from the general formula of alkane it's cn h2n plus 2 it has 12 carbons so the number of hydrogen will be 12 multiplied by 2 plus 2 it will be 26 so the formula will be c12 h26 give the letter of the organic compounds b to you that can be formed when dodecane is cracked Remember that the cracking of alkane produce alkane and alkene mixture. So we will return back to the table to find which particles are alkane and alkene can be produced here by cracking. We will find particle P 
is an alkane or a new or alkene so these three can be the products of cracking b r and u name the reagent and suggest the condition needed to convert organic compound u into organic compound s u is an alkene we need to convert into s which is alcohol so to convert alkene into alcohol we need a reagent which is steam it's a hydration reaction but you have to write steam not water because this reaction happen at high temperature 300 degrees celsius so the correct reagent here will be steam the condition 300 degrees celsius 60 atmospheric pressure and phosphoric acid as a catalyst here three marks for this question you have to write the condition correctly organic compound s which is an alcohol can be converted to organic compound q by reaction with acidified reagent here q is propanoic acid so convert alcohol into acid by acidified reaction this reaction is oxidation reaction name the type of the chemical change that can happen here it's oxidation and the acidified reagent is potassium manganate solution organic compound t is made by reacting two compounds together name the homologous series that the organic t organic compound t belongs to here again back to the table t methyl butanate butanoate t is methyl butanoate so it's an ester name two compounds which react together to make the organic compound t the two compounds for making ester is an alcohol and acid okay the first part here methyl is from methanol which is the alcohol and butanoate is from butanoic acid this is the two parts of the ester so here he asked for to draw the structure of the compound and give its name show all atoms and all the bonds okay here the first one is methanol methanol is an alcohol with one carbon atom so and one hydroxyl hydroxyl group for the alcohol and the other one is butanoic acid butanoic acid has four carbon atom one two three and the fourth will be for the carboxylic group here for naming of the ester we write the name of the alcohol first then the name of the acid so the first part here methyl is for the alcohol methanol and the second part butanoate is for the butanoic acid this is for the nomenclature of the ester did use the molecular formula of the organic compound t molecular formula has to be written as c5 h10 o2 you don't have to show any bones or any structure or formula as here this is not the molecular formula I write it here to be easy to calculate number of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in the uh, in this compound. So you have to write it as C5H10O2. This is a molecular formula. If you write it as a structural formula, you will not get one mark here. You can write it to, just to calculate the number of how many carbons, how many hydrogen, and how many oxygen in this compound. Question six: Polymers are large molecules built up to form built up from small molecules state the name given to the small molecules used to form polymers in which polymers are made from polymers are made from monomers the formula of the polymer here is shown draw the structure of the small molecule in which these polymer as may is made show all the atom and all the bones here you have to read the question carefully because this part you will lose one mark if you didn't show all the atoms if you write this ch3 as one part here to know 
to write the correct formula of the polymer, you have to follow these steps of the monomer. First, remove the brackets, then remove the continuous bonding, continuation of the chain. Second, third one, remove this N, and then the fourth step is to add a double bond. So, adding double bond between these carbons, you have two branches, one for H and the other one missile group. And for the second carbon, it has also one H and one missile group. You have to write it as uh, uh, this structure to show all the bonds and all the atoms. So, first remove the bracket and the continuation of the polymer. Third, remove the N and the last step is to add the double bond. You can reverse this, of course, when we uh, uh, when we are asked to be to draw the polymer from a given monomer. State the type of polymerization here. It's addition polymerization. Question C: Three amino acids are shown. They combine to form a natural polymer. Name the type of the natural polymer formed when these amino acids combine. Amino acids also form protein, which is natural polymer in our bodies. Complete the diagram to show part of the structure of the natural polymer that forms when these amino acids combine. Show all the bonds and the linkage. Here, this question is for three marks. One mark will be for correct amide linkage. This C double bond O connected to the NH, this is the amide linkage. Had, uh, you have to write it correctly in all, uh, between all the amino acids. One mark for the correct order. And the third mark will be for the continuation. You have to leave one bond open from each side to show continuation of this polymer. This is the three marks for this question. Last question here. Name the type of the chemical reaction that takes place when this natural polymer is converted back into amino acids. Amino acids produced from protein by hydrolysis. So the process of formation of amino acids from protein is hydrolysis. Uh, here we come to the end of our exam. Thank you for watching. Wish you best of luck. Thank you.